Hello everyone, this is Faith from faithsbizacademy.com and in this particular Canva tutorial, I will be showing you how to create fun and interesting profile pics and actually how to convert them into GIFs that you can actually use whether in your email newsletters or website or anywhere else that you want on your social media accounts, okay? So this is going to be a very fun session and let's dive in. Now before we go into the actual process of creating this interesting profile pic and how to convert it into actually a moving GIF. I just want to show you this is actually what I've done recently and I've actually embedded it as my uh, signature for my email newsletters. I use ConvertKit and it's really easy. All you need to do is um, just upload the GIF as how you would upload any other image on your ConvertKit. And basically you can also apply it to any other email service providers that you use. You can also create such um, a profile pic that looks a little bit more three-dimensional, looks more fun. You can use it on your social media accounts, you know, anywhere. So this is just to give you a clearer idea of how I actually used it in my newsletters as my email signature, okay? So let's get back to Canva homepage right here. We're going to get started by creating a new design um, for the purpose of creating the profile pic or the GIF as part of your email sign off or social media accounts, I would recommend using either the custom size of a thousand by a thousand. So it could be a square image or just 600 by 600 would actually be good enough. So let's just do that. We're going to do 600 by 600 pixels and let's create a new design. Of course, if you want your image to be uh, be much bigger, let's say on your home page on your website, then you might want to go for higher pixels like a thousand by a thousand or two thousand by two thousand. And then after that, you can download it. And as you download it, you can also resize accordingly. All right. So, um, yeah, so let's get started now. If you for just to get started with, let's go to elements and I'm not going to use my profile pic for now. I'm just going to search for a woman under photos. So here we've got some lovely photos of some lovely ladies. There's one particular one which I liked as I was playing around with these effects. Um, okay, let's have this one. So here you would see that the idea of creating this particular profile pic in this Canva tutorial is to have um, the image of yourself without the background and then you can add different layers to it to make it look more fun and three-dimensional. So let's choose this particular picture and we are going to edit image. We're going to background remover. Now, this is really important because this background remover, you see that that's this, this little crown over here that's because it's only available for Canva Pro account users. Um, there are so many features, advanced features and benefits that Canva Pro account users get to enjoy. So if you're watching this and you're still using the free Canva account, that's perfectly fine. But I would say that having just this background remover feature is, and all the other features is really worth the money to pay for the Canva Pro account, all right? But no stress, no obligations. If you're just happy with using the free account, please go ahead. Um, but, you know, just enjoy this tutorial and decide for yourself if you want to invest in the monthly subscription, okay? So here, just one click background remover and just hang on for a few moments. It also depends on the size of the image you're working on. and also depends on your internet connection, how fast this will work. So let's just be a bit patient over here. And there we go. Nice, isn't it? So just to show you that is really a transparent background. I'm just going to add on a color to my canvas and there it is. So this beautiful lady here, we managed to extract the image of the woman away from the background. So now we are working with a PNG file with transparent background. Okay. So now let's get back this to white and I'm going to go to elements and I would like to add a simple circle. Okay, so this will kind of set the background for it. Maybe I'm going to shrink down the lady a little and move the circle down a little as well. And you can choose any color you want. Um, the other thing about using a Canva Pro account is that you can upload your brand colors. So these are the brand colors that I, these are my business brand colors. So it's really easy to just pluck and play to use according to my 
brand colors okay but if not never mind go to the color palette you can actually just drag and select the color that you want you can also if you know the hex code you can actually uh, key in the x code and then the right color will come out and that's it okay so i'm going to use this light pink shade and i'm going to go to this ellipse menu and position it backwards so the circle is now behind um the lady okay the image of the lady right here so you see that the head is above the circle so that's a little bit to create some sort of depth okay so now we're going to go to elements again and i'm going to search for floral wreath because you see this image was originally like a square or a portrait, right? So then um, her body is kind of cut off in a really awkward manner. And here on the arm is also chopped off. So we need to kind of hide it, all right? So um, you can either use abstract shapes or you can use like floral elements to kind of beautify it. Let's see. So when you mouse over all of these elements, some will have this little crown and the word pro appearing, which means uh, you can use it for Canva Pro account users. And if you're a Canva free account users, if you use such a pro element at the point of downloading, you will be expected to pay for it. Okay. So just be very mindful of what you're choosing. Um, let's see. Let me just look for flowers. I'm not really looking at an entire wreath like oh this looks really nice so i'm just going to rotate it rotate the flower remember the idea is to kind of block out the cropped area so it doesn't look as awkward now this one is not long enough so maybe i'm going to try something else so it also depends on the image you're working with Okay, so let's resize this flower and see if I can make a nicer fit. Yep, this looks slightly better. Here the crop is, there's still a little, you know, very a stark crop that I am i don't fancy too much. So like this, this is actually, this looks better. Something like this okay or we could find something else that gives us a bit more bend curve okay let's just duplicate it when i'm trying out different things because sometimes you know design is very subjective right so go ahead try out different colors try out different designs and then pick the one that you really like okay so this one i think this one fits really well so we've got it like this and i can actually turn it so that I can block part of her arm that was cut off like this so something like this so now it looks more like she's standing behind the florals right so this makes it look prettier and then of course i can decide which one do i like better i like this one i like this one um i think i actually like this better because of how the colors blend okay so maybe i'm gonna work with this one and we will try to see if we can hide the shoulders more later on okay so that's it for now um, you can also add text around it. So we're going to add, um, let's say this is her business profile picture and she wants to add it to her website, right? So she wants to tell people her name. So we're going to add a text box. Let's just choose something here. And I'm going to name her Michelle. And you can choose any font you want. Let's go for apricots. If you're looking for a script font, just type in script in this field here. And then all the script fonts will populate and you can pick one from there. You can scroll through and pick the script font that you want. I'm going to go for apricots. Um, or how about this one? Okay, this looks nice too. Let's see. Now I want the word to kind of form a border around the circle so i'm going to go to effects and that's this curve let me just move my face away curve click on it and there you go now the words are um bent right you can also adjust the curve by just moving the slider how curved you want it to be now i don't fancy that the letters are overlapped so i'm probably trying to uh change yeah the this one i like apricot better so i'm gonna have michelle here like this or maybe on this side because this looks a little emptier 
So I am going back to effects and I need to adjust the curve. I can actually make it straighter or make it more curved to kind of fit the circle like this. So this could be um, Michelle. And for example, she I said this, she wants to have it on her website, right? So she wants to add a logo to her website. So same thing, if you're a Canva Pro account user, you can actually upload your logo. So it's so much easier to find just your business logo and slap it onto any image that you're creating. So here, let's go for this. That's my business, Faith's Biz Academy. And here, because it's a PNG file, what I'm going to do is I can put it right here. And I can edit image. I want my logo to have a little bit like a sticker effect. I want a slight border around it. So I'm going to go to shadows, go to glow. And now you see, let me just zoom in. You can see that that's a glow around it, right? But I'm going to adjust, go to the sliders, increase the transparency. Now it's really stark and I'm going to have it as white instead. You can also adjust whether to make it blur or not so blur. So here you will see that. Let's just zoom in a bit more. You will see that there's a white outline around it. Okay, you can also adjust the size of the glow. Look at that, it's becoming bigger. Not quite what I want, so I might just do this. And there we go. So I can just put it like this. And then I want to have some layer effect. Have the flowers on top of my logo while still having um, my logo visible like this. And you see, because the logo is there, I kind of blocked out the arm that was awkwardly chopped off from the picture. And now this is it. So let's take a look. This is Michelle's new profile picture. There's still many things we can play with, all right? So here you can also try to add a glow or a shadow for the words. So go back to Effect, go to Shadow. And here you see that there is a lot of shadow right now. You can change the color. Maybe let's choose a pink and or maybe the same shade of pink as the background. And you can also select, um, use the slider to adjust the offset. Let's see what we can get. I think it's really faint, so we're not seeing it as much. Maybe I will choose a darker shade of pink going to this color palette, sliding it to a darker shade of pink. So now we can see that there's a shadow behind the word Michelle more obviously. You can change the offset. You can change the direction of the offset. You can also make it decide whether you want the, um, you know, you see the shadows here are much more starker than before, or you can make it really blurred out. All right. So it's up to you. Something like this would be what I want for Michelle's picture right here. So there we go. This is the profile picture and of course once you're ready all you need to do is download as a jpeg file if you want to you can also once again download it with transparent background this is also a canva pro feature let's download it with transparent background and just for page one click on done let it download with transparent background and see what else we can play with when it is an individual compressed PNG file. All right. So I'm going to start a blank page right here and going to uploads on the left hand side menu. Click on upload. You can upload a, um, the Michelle profile picture that we have just created and it has transparent background, right? So here you see, okay. So anyway, just to tell you a little bit of story. So this one, um, I was traveling with my family to Australia and you can see this like my luggage bag behind so it was actually a quick selfie done um and i but i liked the way i look in this photo so i really wanted to use this picture but it wouldn't look nice if i used this picture with that luggage and all the messy background in there right so this is what i did i removed the background i added some elements and and voila this is what I, I did in the end, but that was the original photo, okay? We were at Michelle, upload it. This is the final pic that we did, right? Just minutes earlier. So now this is a completely, it's, it's a new image on its own. And what I wanted to do is I want to show you that once you have done it as a compressed image on its own, um, we can 
play around with it even more right now. Okay, so now maybe I want to create like something more like a sticker. So now I can go to edit image and I can go to shadows again, go to glow. And now you see this glow, right? But I want to make it like look like a sticker, you know, like a planner sticker. So I'm going to the sliders, the control, changing the size. I could leave it as white. Now you cannot really see it, but let's change the size to six. Oh, uh, we really need to change the background color. Let's change the background color right here. And now you can see the glow behind Michelle. Let's do that again. Upload it. Go to edit image. Go to shadows. Go to glow. And I want to change the color of the glow. Go to the sliders again. Change the color right here. Click on white. Now you see there's a white glow around Michelle. And maybe change the size to a size 6. And we want to make uh, the outline stark, okay, and less blur. So there we go. So in fact, I could just increase it to 10 for the size and now it looks like a sticker. There we go. So this is how you can actually still play around with it. After having this image, you can then create something like a sticker. Okay, so that is how you have to download it as a PNG file and you have to download it with transparent background in order for you to have the sticker effect when you add a glow to it okay um yeah if you're just using it for the purpose of social media or just adding to your website you don't necessarily have to have transparent background you can just save it as a square image uh, then of course what you will see is that it will be a square image with a white background all right so that those are your options now um Back to this reference, you will see that I have these moving words. So it's actually a GIF file. I said, thanks for giving, uh, thanks for reading um, my newsletter. So that is what we can do with Michelle's picture as well. So let's make a duplicate right here. Now, here I am going to change this to thanks for reading. Okay, now instead of a script font, I probably want uh, something less scripty so it's easier to see. Okay, so here I'm going to remove this logo and just keep it right here. So what I want to do is to create a GIF with the words, thanks for reading, moving around Michelle's picture. Okay, so we can reduce the size of the fonts a little and go to effects go to this curve slider to just adjust it so that it fits the curvature of the circle here thanks for reading and what we want to do is then i'm going to make a duplicate and then shift this upward okay so we need to make several duplicates so that when you add animations to it the words are actually moving in a circle okay so just doing that shifting it a little bit now here i don't want the words to cover michelle's head so now here for the words i'm going to position it backwards okay so now it's going behind michelle now duplicate again and then just shifting it some more moving it Okay, let's do this. Shifting it, moving it, hugging the border of the circle, and we can make another duplicate. Same thing. So it's just a rinse and repeat. Here. There we go. And let's see. I'm just trying to be really careful. Now duplicating the same page again we're moving the word so that it's completing it's going to come out from behind michelle very soon so here duplicate again and here we're going to shift it out like this just a bit more probably just one last one duplicate the page here shifting out some more right here so now it would have completed somewhat of a full circle around behind her. So let's take a look at the grid view. So now we've got all this, right? So you can see, thanks for reading, it's moving behind all the way. Now, what do we need to do? We need to 
add um you don't have to add animation so when you add these animations what happens is the it animates the elements on the page but that's not what we want we just want to move the page around okay so other than the thanks for reading words i also want to add some let's say sparkles so i'm going to elements and i'm searching for sparkles i want other elements to be animated um, around Michelle. So here, going to the filter search, I am searching for, I want to look for animations. Where are they? Okay, so let's see, sparkle. I want to look for the ones that are animated. I'm not sure why it's not appearing right here. That's really strange. But these are animated right and this is animated too and this is also animated so this is also animated so let's try this one okay so we're gonna move it resize it right here we don't want to block michelle's beautiful face so we're gonna position it behind her so you see the sparkles Control d to duplicate and i'm gonna just swift this swivel this around and same thing gonna position it backwards behind a flower so there's still some sparkle going on but it's not really in your face so those are the animated elements other than the thanks for reading that we're trying to make it move okay so of course now that i have have all these duplicated pages i need to make sure that the sparkles are also on those pages as well so holding down the shift key to select multiple elements at the same time uh, i can group it to make it easier to move them around Control c going to the next page Control v and just making sure that they're not blocking michelle's face and once again just rinse and repeat of course if i had better foresight i should have added the sparkles before i adjusted all the you know thanks for reading words but no biggie let's just do it right now here just have to be a bit more patient copying and pasting the sparkles and positioning them such that they don't block michelle's uh, beautiful face okay so let's see we've got the sparkles and now to test it out so double click here here instead of six seconds i'm going to change to one second um, and apply to all pages now one second is not going to be ideal but i do want to show you the difference all right so let's play it so you see one second you you do see now that that's the sparkle and thanks for reading is actually moving around Michelle. So that is our objective and it is met. But to make it a smoother process with the words thanks for reading moving more smoothly, you want to reduce it to let's say half a second and apply to all pages. And let's see that again. So now you see it's moving at a much, it's, it's a more, it's a smoother motion. Okay, so what I would do also is if I want to save it as a, as a, a GIF file, what I will do is I would go to file and actually make a copy of this project because you see, I've got like different images here, but right now I just want to save the GIF file. So file and go to file, make a copy. And here I'm going to go to the grid view and deleting the other pages that I don't need. I'm just trying to save the ones for the GIF. And now that it has gone one round, I'm going to duplicate it, okay? Hold, click on the first one, hold down the shift key, click on the last image, and now all the slides are selected. Control D to duplicate, and now I've made a duplicate, okay? So why did I do that? Because I want it to go somewhat on the loop, okay? So if we were to play it, this is how it looks like. So thanks for reading. And it goes again, thanks for reading. Okay, so it goes on a loop. I just like to have it twice. Okay, and this would be my final version. And I would go to share in order to download it as a gift. I need to go to share, click on download, make sure here. Um, if you're going to embed it like in your um, email newsletters, like what I did here, you would want to save it as a GIF. Um, okay, instead of an mp4 file. So here we're going to save it as a GIF and all the pages are selected and there we go. So we're going to download it. We're going to wait for it. 
and we are going to come back here come back to so that is that is the gift okay it's, it's it's so fun isn't it i mean i find it very fun uh creating all these and adding designs but i'm not done yet so please stay tuned i still want to show you um different elements you can add to create more depth as well okay but let's see if we can get uh, the gift downloaded okay so it's here let's take a look at our final product now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick walkthrough to just to show you how I would embed uh, Michelle's gift on my newsletter. Okay, if you're using ConvertKit, lucky you, this would be the same exact steps to take. Okay, go to Plus. We are already on the newsletter broadcast editor. Okay, go to Plus and add on an image. And then I would need to upload this Michelle's GIF and now if the file size is too big it's going to take a long time to upload which is why i chose 600 by 600 when i created uh, michelle's uh, profile pic and then convert it into a gif so if you do have if you started with a thousand by a thousand you might want to resize your canvas before creating the gif okay so now it's blank right now but you've got to give it a few moments for the gif to load and there we go so here I can change the alignment to the left. I can resize it again to 300. So it's not too in your face, but that's it guys. That's it. So there we have it. The new gift that I have created using uh, beautiful Michelle's, you know, she's, she's probably not even a Michelle, but anyway, she looks really lovely like this and it's, and it's fun, right? So this is it. Like I said, hold your horses because I'm not quite done yet. I still want to give you more examples on what you can do. Um, let's get back to this particular image here and we are going to duplicate it. I want to show you how to create more depth. Okay, so what else can you do? You can also click on this profile picture, go to edit image and add shadows. All right, you can add a drop shadow. So that would make it even more three-dimensional, right? So now it's very subtle, yet it adds to it. So you see, that's this drop shadow right next to her. Or you can add different types of shadows. You can also adjust the shadows by going to these sliders. You can change the offset. You can change the angle. You can reduce or increase the transparency. You can even change the color. There we go. But I'm going to stick with black for now so there it is and what else can you do you can also add other elements to create the kind of depth okay so let's get rid of this one and we are removing my logo and we are also removing michelle's name and we will go back to elements and search for floral wreath okay so let's see let's choose something like uh, this this looks pretty okay right here Con now that the florals are on top of michelle in terms of layers i'm going to hold down the command key if you're using a mac or a control key to click until i select michelle because that is how you select the layers below okay once again when you click on something and you realize that it's not the layer you want and you want to click on something below it hold down the command key on a Mac or a control key until you select it. Now there we are selecting Michelle and I can resize her. I can move her around so that the florals will cover her. And yeah, this doesn't fit that well. Let's try to make it smaller. Something like this. This is better. But you know, the top arc of the flowers are covering michelle's face that is not what i want so what can we do now what can we do let's zoom in a little bit more and we are going to click on the flowers and we're going to press ctrl d to duplicate or you can just click on this little icon which is the duplicate key duplicate it now we've got two copies of the floral wreaths and we're going to overlap them exactly one on top of the other and then for the topmost one we are going to crop it we are cropping it away and then the second one which is one layer below i'm going to position it backwards now there you go voila now it looks more three-dimensional right because we've got a shadow around michelle we've got the florals in front of her to cover off the crop parts and we've got the flowers behind her so she's like in between two layers so it makes her look much more um three-dimensional
Okay, now it's the same trick. Let's do it one more time. One more time, okay? So we're gonna delete the reef. We are we have Michelle right here. Let's try it again. This one, big bright bold flowers covering Michelle's face. Uh-uh-uh. We're gonna duplicate control D. Make sure it's layered exactly one on top of the other. Topmost one, click crop, crop it off. There is no um as long as they're perfectly superimposed you don't have to worry about where the crop ends okay you just need to make sure that her face is not covered all right so then this one the second one that is behind the first one position it backwards so that michelle's face can be seen once again she's in a beautiful wreath of flowers and let's do it one more time one last one to drive home the point let's find some thing with like a gold frame like this one this looks pretty cool here whoops before that i need to delete the other reefs and we have this one now this one is not so ideal because it doesn't cover up the cropped parts too well but right now my focus is just on showing you the how to create this three-dimensional effect so let's try this Okay, same thing. Control D to duplicate. I'll click on this icon. Make sure the duplicates are fully superimposed on each other. Click on the top one. Click crop. Crop it down. Make sure her face is not covered. The second one, positioning it backwards. And there we go. Okay, that is so, so, so cool, right? Um, now, what else can you use other than florals? I mean, I know not everyone likes florals. Uh, not an issue. We're going to duplicate this delete the reefs and we are going to use some abstract elements you can use anything any images that you upload um you can even just hide the crop parts with a logo flowers basic shapes so here i'm going to go to elements and search for abstract so i love all these abstract shapes so this one i like this one as well because when you see these color swatches appearing it means you can change those colors so let's do that. We can have it something like this to partially cover her, the cropped parts. The colors look pretty okay. So I'm just going to stick to it. Control D. And maybe we can do something like this. Okay. So there we go. There we have it. We can then control A to select everything and then you can resize it to fit the frame better. So we've got abstract elements now, and it's not just florals, you can also just use shapes, all right? Um, yeah, so basically it's really, really up to you. You can add words, you can add animated elements, you can duplicate the frames and move things around like what we did here for the GIF, and then now it has it is an animated GIF. And you can add these beautiful floral frames to create depth and make it more dimensional. So now this is so fun, right? This is going to make your profile photos way more interesting than, than probably what they are currently are. But, you know, just have fun. Um, apply it to anything. You can start using these methods to create beautiful let's see, family photos, right? Take your family photos, your kids' photos, your loved ones' photos, and create something like this to, to make like greeting cards or just, you know, a gift for your loved ones, all right? So thank you so much. I do hope that you have enjoyed this particular Canva tutorial. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section. I would very much appreciate it. If you would like the video, subscribe to our channel so they can stay tuned to new Canva tutorials added regularly. I will see you around.